Hello, and thanks for tuning in to learn about the Plant PAX 5.0 release from Rockwell Automation. My name is Troy Menino, and I'm the Process Automation Specialist at Turtle & Hughes. Here's the agenda for today. We will briefly do a Plant PAX level set, which serves as a refresher on what Plant PAX is, and then spend most of our time talking about what's new in the 5.0 release. I will finish with a helpful list of resources so that you have everything in one place to come back to. I'm happy to send this presentation to you if you wish. Uh, we will also talk about some Plant PAX 5.0 training offered by Turtle and Hughes to be on the lookout for. Let's dive into Plant PAX 5.0, the modern DCS from Rockwell. Traditional DCS customers often struggle with things like closed system designs, slower time to market, difficulty in migration and modernizations, and a higher total cost of ownership. And from that customer feedback, Rockwell aims to address these things with Plant PAX, which is comprised of the integrated architecture components that you may be used to, things like Studio 5000, Factory Talk View, Historian, Asset Center, and Analytics. These products are implemented using a prescribed methodology that ensures system performance. Ultimately, the result is a system which can be plant-wide, scalable, secure yet information enabled, and flexible in delivery and support. So how do we ensure system performance? And the answer is characterization which is the process by which Rockwell has implemented these components like Rockwell controllers and HMIs in a lab environment under varying circumstances in order to create a set of guidelines or guardrails. And if you implement a project using these tools in the Plant PAX documentation, you know you achieve the critical system attributes by which we define performance. And those attributes are shown here, things like display call up time. A DCS is more than just the code that operates a facility, and Plant PAX is more than just the library of process objects. As we've discussed, a Plant PAX system utilizes trusted hardware and software from Rockwell's integrated architecture and applies the products using a prescribed, characterized methodology to give you an outcome with known performance. That methodology covers all aspects of a DCS, the hardware, software, network architecture, visualization, security, and asset management. We approach Plant PAX from a system standpoint, and we want that system to be future-proof. So it takes advantage of technology updates and security updates in a modular fashion. In general, a wholesale architecture upgrade is not necessarily required to achieve Plant PAX performance. So that's Plant PAX. Now let's dive into what's new. Plant PAX 5.0 is a significant release, and here are some of the key themes. Uh, 5.0 focuses on reducing server requirements and simplifying the architectures required. How the process library is implemented has changed in order to help our customers maintain consistency and eliminate human errors. Certain workflows have been streamlined to enable more rapid development of projects. There's also guidance on how to implement the system in a cyber secure manner that allows uh, or that aligns with international standards from the IEC. Plant PAX can be seamlessly integrated with our analytics solutions from Rockwell and PTC. And everything we will talk about today is going to feed into these ideas. Here are the Plant PAX 5.0 feature highlights supporting the process industries. Uh, I will briefly run through them here so you have a chance to look at them all, and then we'll talk about these in more granularity. There are simplified architectures with reduced server requirements, uh, higher performance redundant process controllers in which the process objects are now embedded. There are new alarms, Logic's tag-based alarms, uh, so you configure them one place. There's automatic hardware diagnostics. There's additional cybersecurity certifications, something called highly integrated heart now. Uh, new organization, ownership and arbitration functionality. Embedded libraries supporting 
21 CFR Part 11 audit trails and e-signatures, uh, and additional support for language switching. Again, the benefits of this release uh, are to make Plant PAX workflows intuitive in order to simplify the development and maintenance effort and provide consistency. Rockwell is expanding the Logix controller family with the introduction of new process controllers. These are superset controllers, meaning you can do everything that you would do with a regular controller, but with a more process centric user experience. Uh, these will be available in three control logics catalog numbers, which are for three, 10 and 40 megabytes, as well as two compact logics catalog numbers for two and four megabytes. All of these are conformally coded and the control logics uh, have an extended temperature range. The process controllers also include support for Flex 5000 or 5094 IO. Now I will go through some features exclusive to those new process controllers, which is why you will see process controller exclusive listed here on the next few slides. With these new controllers comes embedded process instructions. This means that the process objects are part of the standard design palette within Logix Designer, just like standard objects. No longer does the user have to go to the internet and download the library and then import the library into the project. The library is now native. This reduces the impact on controller memory and provides a more consistent delivery for customers. Having less variability in how the objects are deployed makes the system more maintainable. Uh, embedded objects also simplify library lifecycle management because updating the library is now just a firmware update. The help files for objects are also embedded within Studio 5000, so you never have to go searching for the documentation that matches your library version. So to use these instructions, you simply go to the new Plant PAX tab within Logix Designer version 33, select the instruction you want, drag and drop it, and start configuring it. Typically, in the past, you instantiate your instructions, download to the controller, then go to the HMI where you can launch faceplates and do some configuration there. Basically, that experience is now brought down to the controller. There's a new graphical interface for configuration and troubleshooting of each instruction. If you click on the ellipsis button uh, within your instructions, that interface opens. This is where you can configure things like your HMI, your alarms, and certain parameters and tags. Within that new graphical interface for instructions, you will find a diagram that looks like this. It's called a SAMA diagram interface, and it graphically represents what is happening within a code instruction. The symbols we use to document control strategies were developed by the Scientific Apparatus Makers Association, hence the name SAMA diagram. This is an intuitive design time interface that eliminates the need to go digging through code that someone else wrote and now you're trying to figure out their thought process. These diagrams are animated and they're populated with live data and they show the flow of the instruction from top to bottom. Uh, this is a useful tool for troubleshooting. You'll generally see the process sensing instrument at the top and the final control element located at the bottom. Along with the new library, we are adopting a new alarm engine for Logix tag based alarms. These are alarms which are essentially just attributes of tags and are generated in the controller. There's no HMI configuration necessary for these alarms. They will just work if you're using a process controller in the objects which have these alarms embedded. The alarms are detected at the same time the logic is executed. They're buffered in the controller and then they're pushed to the HMI only on change, uh, which minimizes the load on your data server. Each object has predefined alarm definitions, which can be turned on and off while online. This makes alarming easier and more consistent in a plant PAX system. So the real advantage is not having to configure alarms in the HMI server. Instead, they are included by default on the plant PAX instructions within the Studio 5000 design environment. And the new instructions have that intuitive configuration interface where the predefined alarms can be easily configured. 
there will be support for the old libraries in parallel with the next generation or NG libraries that are embedded in the new process controllers. This simply ensures that you can take a phased approach to modernizing and implementing the new technologies. I expect the next generation embedded libraries to receive more investment from Rockwell in the future. The new process controllers come with an instruction counter. <clears throat> this feature provides a count of each of the plant PAX and process control, control instructions that are configured in each task, as well as the total counts of these instruction types within the controller project. Uh, this provides a means to compare your actual configuration to the design configuration established from the plant PAX system estimator tool or the PSE, and this ultimately helps ensure compliance with the plant PAX methodology. It can be accessed in two ways. The first is by right clicking on a task and simply selecting instruction usage as shown in the picture here, or by clicking edit controller properties, then clicking in the plant PAX tab, then clicking uh, instruction usage. This is just an effort to place guardrails around the development environment. Plant PAX has always been about documenting and testing the boundaries of what Plant PAX is capable of and how things should be loaded. So this new instruction usage counter gives us better insight into controller loading for optimal task balancing and visibility. Another process controller exclusive is the process centric default tasking model. This aligns with what has always been published in the Plant PAX documentation, but now is the default, which will again drive consistency. It reduces the effort on project setup by pre-configuring the task model, uh, while by default complying with Plant PAX methodology. It accomplishes this by having each process controller pre-configured by default with the four periodic tasks shown here. Fast, which executes every 100 milliseconds, normal for 250 milliseconds, slow for 500 milliseconds, and a system task which executes once per second. Note that the task model cannot be changed online once the radio box is checked for use plant PAX tasking model uh, within the controller properties shown here. If this box is checked, one cannot add or remove tasks, nor can the task priorities be changed. Only the task periods and the watchdog timers within the task properties can be modified uh, when the plant PAX task model is selected. If you need to change the task model, you have to deselect that checkbox while offline. New to this release is automatic diagnostics. Diagnostics are automatically populated from the controller up into the HMI without any coding. Rockwell has always given you diagnostic data within the data structure of the controller, but it has been an engineering effort to get those tags on an HMI display. With automatic diagnostics, we do this automatically. Uh, this information is buffered in the controller and pushed up through the alarm and events database to a new automatic diagnostics event summary frame within Factory Talk View SE. So Logic's code is no longer required for detecting controller faults, I.O. connection faults, broken wires, short circuits, uh, and motor over temperature conditions. Whether it's adding a single new I.O. card, adding a completely new SCID, or even large expansions, the automatic hardware diagnostic diagnostic feature means that with plant PAX 5.0 configuring all the alarms for the new hardware is literally just a click away. All the hardware alarms are available and ready to use as soon as you connect your new hardware to your plant PAX 5.0 system and are automatically sent to the operator's alarm summary screen. Device and hardware alarms are reported on exception rather than scheduled polling in order to reduce data traffic. Ultimately, this feature reduces the time needed to program and commission your hardware alarms. As you may be aware, HART is a digital signal superimposed on a 4 to 20 milliamp analog signal, often used for diagnostics and calibration of field instrumentation. 
Now with highly integrated heart, you can better manage your instrumentation. We're bringing that device configuration closer to becoming just another IO object in the tree. Additionally, there are plant PAX specific data types for heart that will further reduce the effort to integrate heart into your system code. This new intuitive integration of heart into the IO configuration of Logic's designer is similar to how we integrate Rockwell automation devices and power products today. Some benefit of the new functionality uh, is that you can add and replace heart devices online. Uh, you get integrated diagnostics via the device profile and there is integrated device information native to Logic's designer. To leverage this new highly integrated heart functionality, you need to use Factory Talk View SE version 12, Studio 5000 Logic's designer version 33, a Logic's process controller, and a 5094 heart card. The 5094 also known as Flex 5000 heart modules were recently released and are shown here. These new modules have eight channels, isolated input and output modules, and will support heart versions five, six, and seven. DLR and PRP architectures are also supported with these. New functionality has been introduced for organization, ownership, and arbitration. This is a methodology for managing shared equipment. You can build equipment groups without having to write any custom code. Uh, from the equipment groups, you can send commands down to all of the devices or propagate device statuses upward. For example, a tank may have associated valves, pumps, and instrumentation uh, that may now be managed in a shared manner. We can assign ownership of the valves or pumps to the tank along with the instrumentation and manage it from a single faceplate. Within that faceplate, you essentially build a hierarchy or an organizational tree of your equipment. The highest level may be tank farm, and then under that, two children, tank 100 and tank 200. Under each of those will be the devices like pumps or valves, some of which may be shared among the tanks. So this new ownership arbitration functionality allows you to manage multiple requests on a piece of equipment from different devices easily. Here are some additional modernizations to the Plant PAX HMI. Factory Talk Lynx version 6.2 added the ability to run two instances of alarm-enabled data servers on a single computer, which reduces the total server footprint uh, on large applications. Remember that Factory Talk Lynx is responsible for getting those Logics tag-based alarms from the controller into the HMI. Another feature is that you can compile global objects to optimize the runtime performance of the system, improving things like launch times for faceplates and process displays. Finally, there is a new visualization tool which allows you to connect to a database and display that data as a grid. This could be audit trail data from a SQL database, perhaps. Application Code Manager has been updated to support the new controllers and the format of the new instructions. There is also new functionality to support rapid bulk code generation. We can now add additional library artifacts like faceplates or user documentation to a given library object. We now have new library links, which allows us to create parent level objects with several children. So you can create bundled objects for more rapid development. There have also been command line console expansions, uh, allowing some new commands from the ACM console. And finally, Logic's tag-based alarms are also supported by Application Code Manager. Network infrastructure is something we see customers struggle with often. IT is generally focused on bandwidth and OT is focused on uptime. So that means engineers now must understand some networking. And as the scope of networks creeps over time, they become more complicated. So customers expect Rockwell as a DCS vendor to be more prescriptive in how networks are to be laid out. They expect Rockwell to test the configurations, find the boundaries and document them. So in Plant PX 5.0, there is more guidance to assist process users in deploying their networks. 
Here you see a snapshot of the process system estimator within Integrated Architecture Builder, which is a tool used to design and size different plant PAX reference architectures. Our network guidance will be focused on three types of architectures. An enhanced redundant architecture using parallel redundancy protocol or PRP, an enhanced resilient architecture using device level ring, and a simplex architecture. And we recognize this is not a one size fits all scenario and you may end up with a hybrid of these systems. It's not uncommon for a customer to have a simplex network perhaps for the balance of plant, but require an enhanced redundant architecture in a certain critical part of the plant. Now you have more guidance on how those hybrid architectures uh, should be applied. To support these enhanced network architectures, the control logics process controllers do support high availability, in other words, redundancy. This expands our existing options for high availability and will be the first release for the new process controllers. It will continue to utilize the 1756 RM2 module to sync the two controllers across the separate chassis. And these new more powerful controllers mean there's no memory reduction when using high availability. Additionally, Rockwell combined the firmware into a single version to simplify firmware management. There are some limitations and best practices when implementing this solution, so please be sure to check out the high availability systems reference manual. For industries with regulated processes, the adoption of plant PAX is simplified by reducing the effort needed to validate your system. The move to embedded instructions within the controller transitions them to a standard offering. In other words, a common off the shelf solution. These features can be used with PharmaSuite or Batch, uh, other products that you may find in regulated industries. This allows you to streamline compliance with 21 CFR Part 11 requirements. Cybersecurity is an ever increasing concern for our customers. Changing demands and evolving technology are requiring us to implement system level practices for security. Rockwell uses IEC 62443 as the international standard to support the needs of our customers. This work has been going on for a few years, but with Plant PAX 5.0, we are addressing our customers' needs from a system perspective. There is a reference architecture and guidelines on how to apply IEC 62443-3 uh, system level methodologies for cybersecurity. Ultimately, this helps reduce risk when applying cybersecurity to your design. One of the key advantages of Plant PAX has always been the scalability. To supplement this theme, there are now new process controllers that we talked about in the Compact Logics family. The new embedded instructions reduces the barrier to adoption by no longer using up application memory and will drive consistency for OEMs, integrators, and the end user. In this release, we are leveraging Factory Talk View SE for visualization and coupling it with an expanded industrial PC portfolio. Uh, this enables our OEMs to deliver more complex applications and integrate them with balance of plant DCS systems. The new advanced diagnostics functionality and alarm functionality can easily be added to the DCS simply by adding a new link to the OEM controller with no rework required. Additionally, the analytics support we are adding in this release will scale from the skid to the balance of plant, enabling both parties to achieve better insight into their equipment. So our customers are looking for more than just a technology stack when they choose a DCS vendor. They're looking for a vendor who supports them throughout the life cycle of the plant. And to help us better support our customers, Rockwell has created a Plant PAX system ID. The ID will help Rockwell track the status of everything on site and will enable us to get better support in managing hardware and software life cycles, patch identification, product compatibility, preservation of system knowledge, and improved spare parts management. This allows our enterprise level customers to track their entire fleet. And the ID and associated information built up against it will stay with the facility 
should it ever change hands or ownership. The new lifecycle services division uh, is focused on supporting our customers across that entire life cycle of a facility. This is a renewed focus, which comes with some improvements in our offerings for how we work with customers. And for more information on these offerings, I recommend that you talk with the services group at Turtle and Hughes. Fin Manager, Rockwell's software for virtualization and Fin Client Management is now a standard part of Plant PAX. When you begin building a process system within the process system estimator tool in IAB, you will have the option to select a virtualized Fin Manager system. Additionally, there is a new line of industrial Fin clients, PCs, and monitors in the VersaView 6300 family. In this release of Plant PAX, we are greatly increasing our ability to support complex process applications, not only for continuous processes, but also for batching applications. Factory Talk Batch version 14 was recently released, and this release gives you more flexibility in making area model changes while online. It reduces the recipe management overhead. And there's now an updated interface for Factory Talk View that uses HTML5 natively. Additionally, there is a new API interface for enterprise level integration of the system. Rockwell has also begun layering analytics at every level, the edge, on premise, and in the cloud. Factory Talk Innovation Suite for process applications introduces us to a set of pre-built templates and dashboards to assist with implementation of these analytics. We are leveraging our partnership with PTC and utilizing ThingWorks and Factory Talk Analytics for Devices Appliance to provide insightful information on DCS alarming activity and more. There is training for integrators through PTC University, which is available on the Rockwell e-commerce portal. So in summary, Plant PAX 5.0 accelerates project development. It makes your system easier to operate and maintain and more secure and ultimately lowers your total cost of ownership. Here are some additional resources. The Plant PAX documentation has been simplified and streamlined into fewer documents seen at the top of this list. Uh, there are also a series of helpful new YouTube videos discussing new technical features. If you are a Turtle and Hughes integrator customer and would like to participate in a hands-on lab using the new process controllers, we do have 10 seats available for March 30th, 2021, and you can add your name to that list today simply by emailing me. And here's my contact information. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, would like a copy of this presentation, or if you would like a personalized presentation for your team, I'm happy to do that. So thanks again for tuning in to learn about Plant PAX 5.0 and have a great day.